Hi everyone, Dutch Reefer here. Welcome to the latest Focus Friday video, um, in which I will be telling you more about coral growth and fragging your corals. So this will be more of a practical hands-on video. Um, so in my, one of my previous videos, uh, I have told about coral growth, I have told about fragging and how to frag. So this will be more of a uh, practical video to show you when I frag my corals, which corals I have fragged, and uh, what my considerations are when uh, when fragging them. So let's go. Um, the inspiration for this video came from the fact that I fragged quite a few corals in the last few months or weeks. So uh, let's show those first. So first of all, um, you might have uh, seen this uh, uh, leather toadstool video in my uh, of a coral in my previous videos. Um, this used to be very big, so I think even triple or quadruple by size. And a few months ago, I uh, removed some parts. So right here, I removed a piece. Right here, I removed a piece, and somewhat more on the right there. So. I just took a pair of scissors, um, snipped it off, it healed pretty well, or actually just fine. But then there was a huge piece of coral still here underneath, which was actually hurting the coral more than it did good, because it was uh, lying on the sand, and uh, sand got in there eventually, and uh, it wasn't good for the coral health. So this week, last week, I decided to uh, pick up the scissors once again and remove uh, two more pieces which are right here at the moment so as you can see one of them is uh, opened up a bit right now and the other one isn't uh, but both of them are healing pretty well and um, so that's an example of a coral that I've fragged recently um, and it was mainly due to the fact that it wasn't thriving or at its best at that certain moment, so that's why I decided to frag it. Then there's this one, this Gorgonian. You might have seen the, the frags that I made of it in my previous videos. Um, if you look closely right here, uh, that's where I uh, snipped it off. So I'll point with my finger right there. That's where I, uh, I cut it off just using a pair of scissors and it's already growing back. Like half a centimeter is already returning. There are polyps on there. Um, so that removed quite a bit, like I think this big, um, and the fact that the, um, the gyre was putting quite a lot of flow on that piece, I decided to, uh, to cut it off and to, uh, to make a frag of it. Same goes for this, uh, leather gorgonian, which also had, uh, one of, uh, like this is one of the branches and this is one of the branches and there's also one right here and that one I cut off and uh, not for a very specific reason but I thought it was uh, getting a little bit too big for my taste so it was time to uh, to get rid of it um, this one right here which is a very nice uh, Montipora I don't know for sure if it's an Undata or uh, or another piece, but I think it's an Undata. And uh, this was fragged by my uh, uh, local fish store just a few days ago. As you can see, there are... Uh, you can see the sawing edges, so they used a saw to frag this one. It was a very large plate, and they decided to uh, cut it into smaller pieces so it would be more... Uh, uh, attractive for people to buy including me of course so uh, I got this and I'm uh, fairly happy with it it's um, hopefully it heals nicely and then it uh, can grow so another one which I've already fragged quite a lot is this uh, Montipora first I want to show you the fact that these Montipora right here while the red plate has already uh, overgrown the uh, branching uh, Montipora underneath of which there is also a piece right here by the way so here if you look in the back behind the green um, the green leather coral there's uh, the Montipora that was right here but it broke off 
So it has already overgrown the uh, the branching Montipora, and then there is this uh, Montipora hirsuta, the green one with the green dots, which is right now, I think, just one millimeter away from uh, touching the uh, the red coral, the red Montipora. So I'll just while I res while I frequently uh, take off a bit of this red Montipora. As you can see, the growth edges are pretty rough. That's because I keep breaking off pieces. Uh, I'm just going to let these two uh, intertwine and see what happens. Unless they start acting really aggressive towards each other, then I'll uh, I'll remove uh, pieces of both of them so they won't touch anymore. But it's a nice experiment to see uh, how they will uh, behave towards each other in the next few weeks. Here's another example of a coral that I'm not fragging on purpose um, but I'm because I like to see what's going on. So as you can see it's a bit uh, this um, Acropora milipora is, um, is a bit slimy at the moment but that's because it's feeding. But here at the base you can see that there's a, a Montipora growing towards it. And if you look at this small white piece right here that's where they have already commence some coral warfare, chemical warfare, to uh, determine which one will be the winner. So the Milapora has, has won. So the Milapora is actually keeping the Monty back from growing, which is uh, which is fine. And uh, yeah, they're uh, handling it on their own way and I'm not uh, interfering with that. So another example is um, this uh, yellow Gorgonian otherwise known as the rusty gorgonian um, has seen better days it's still doing okay but uh, it has suffered quite a bit from the fact that I've had uh, quite uh, high phosphates over the past few months two months I guess so there were some branches that were uh, actually uh, had died off a bit and then I had to cut them away and um, from the cutaways there were two healthy pieces left so as you can you can see those uh, right here, I decided to uh, glue them to a, a snail shell and just uh, let them grow and uh, see if they uh, survive, which they probably will. And then uh, yeah, just let it grow as a new colony. So one of the last ones that I wanted to show you. The not the last one, but uh, next to the last one is this uh, Stylophora, which I'm uh, I'm pretty fond of, especially uh, since there's an emerald crab in here, which you can see pretty nicely, by the way, at the moment. It's um, it uh, has been in there for uh, well, I guess close to a year or even longer, so it kept uh, uh, kept inside the Stylophora while the coral was growing, and hasn't left it uh, since. And I don't want to frag this coral since I love Stylophora. The way it grows, uh, it's really a good sign to see if, if the Stylophora is still going, then it's uh, your tank is okay. Um, and it's uh, one of those corals which you can almost see growing by the day. So I did move it a bit, that's why I wanted to show you. Uh, it was uh, here before and I moved it slightly down. I think it's about three centimeters down to give it just those three centimeters extra of growth space since it was running out and it was actually touching the waterline a few weeks ago. So I moved it. The very last one I want to show you is this green star polyp uh, which is also a fast grower and uh, to me an extremely nice uh, coral to have in your tank even though it's fairly simple, easy to keep. Um, some consider even consider it a pest, uh, but I'm I love it and um, I'm uh, keeping it. So what I do, uh, and it's time for that by the way, since you can obviously see it has uh, reached the waterline. I will remove the top four or five centimeters, take a knife, cut it, use a spatula to remove it, and then I have a nice frag and uh, the coral can get back to growing again. So that was, uh, the time is already running out, it was uh, my video on uh, a practical view on fragging corals and I hope you liked it, so see you on the next one.
Have a nice weekend. Bye-bye.